In 1956, a production company called Cinemascope released the film The Conqueror, starring Hollywood superstar John Wayne. The film ended up tanking. New York Times called it an oriental western. Even John Wayne said the film was a f disaster. New York Times criticizes Dick Powell, the producer of the film, for obviously not being interested in having any accuracy in his depiction of Genghis Khan. But in Dick Powell's defense, he had to sell this to an American audience and present Genghis in a form they recognized. That's not to say Powell didn't make sure to include the usual stereotypical anti-Asian sediments of the era. The most obvious being, well, Borda's white and looks more like a British princess than a Mongol queen. Without even going into the movie, there is so much to just say about the movie posters alone. Temujin looks more like a Roman soldier than a Mongol warrior. The movie posters present Genghis to be a noble barbarian that loves but is also a ruthless killer. A person who heavily influenced popular modern thinking of Genghis Khan and the Mongols is Jack Weatherford with his New York Times best-selling book Genghis Khan and the Making of the Modern World, which came out in 2004. Weatherford attributes the changing attitudes to Genghis and the Mongols to the fall of the Soviet Union to which archives that were previously closed were now open for researchers to explore. Weatherford notes that to the Mongolians, Genghis Khan is their champion, but to the rest of the world, he has been viewed as a great villain. Weatherford's goal is to show the rest of the world the Mongolian view of Genghis by reconstructing the history through these newly available resources. This is Matthew Paris, who was a British monk and chronicler. He claimed that Mongols would eat the unattractive and suffocate the beautiful and use their bodies for entertainment in a banquet for savages. Matthew Paris claim they would rape virgins till they died of exhaustion, and they would cut off their breasts as snacks for their chiefs. Christians tended to view the Mongols as an apocalyptic force because of their chaotic style of warfare. They were believed to be the people of Gog and Magog, who were part of a group of 22 kings all believed to be descendants from Japheth. Alexander the Great ends up locking them away in the Caspian Mountains or the breast of the north. At the end of time, the Bible says they will break free under the direction of the Antichrist and destroy the world. The name Mongolia actually derives from Magagui, meaning descendant of Maga. Mongols being nomadic were always going to be seen as different by sedentary cultures and therefore be treated as the other. John Plano sees them as having laws, just not the right Christian laws. He writes, although they have no law concerning the doing of what is right or the avoidance of sin, nevertheless, there are certain traditional things invented by them or their ancestors, which they say are sins. Christians tended to see anything that wasn't Christian as being inherently evil or demonic. John saw their tangerism as sorcery and remarked that they listened to demons they perceived as gods. In Richard Brightman's article, Hitler and Genghis Khan, he notes an incredibly interesting quote from a speech Hitler makes in which he almost justifies mass killing through Genghis Khan, noting, Our strength is in our quickness and our brutality. Genghis Khan had millions of women and children killed by his own will and with a gay heart. History sees only in him a great state builder. Brightman notes Robert Waite's point that Hitler would target specific sources in order to reinforce his own views. Genghis Khan is used like this quite frequently. Weatherford, for example, focuses on the attributes of the Mongols and Genghis that help support his views, just how Powell picked and chose what Mongol attributes to depict in his film in order to sell to an American audience. Weatherford making his book more novelistic I think paid off because it made it more appealing to a wider audience. Even if aspects of it are exaggerated, it still helped open up to the idea of Genghis not just being a ruthless killer, but a promoter of trade, international law, and religious tolerance. The Conqueror and Genghis Khan and the Making of the Modern World are two great contrasting examples of how popular views of Genghis Khan and the Mongols have changed over the last few decades. I believe the views will continue to change, because over time, as culture shifts, so does the perception and interpretation of Genghis and the Mongols.